and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm, I've run out of time today. Life has got in the way of Sudoku solving. How dare it? Um, so, well, what's the story? We're going to do a puzzle by Zetamath, or at least I hope we are. Now, I was meant to do a different puzzle by Zetamath today, um, but the testers have warned me that that puzzle is a, an absolute beast, um, and I've not given myself enough time to do an absolute beast. So I went to Logic Masters Germany and found this puzzle, Potpourri, which has an enormously high rating, three stars out of five for difficulty. I'm hoping that that means I will be able to do it in some reasonable amount of time, or God forbid, there might not be a video this evening, which would be a disaster. So this is the puzzle I'm going to be doing. Now, um, speaking of Satamath, we have a, a nice bonus. If you are a patron of the channel over on Patreon, then in the next couple of days, we're gonna be publishing a, um, well, how to describe it? Um, so a series of linked puzzles by Zetamath as a bonus um, for you guys. It's um, it's a very interesting set of Sudokus where you sort of have to work out the rules of what's going on. So look out for that. That's going to be available um, in, well, I say in the next couple of days. So check it out. I've got nothing else to say about that. Uh, anything else to mention? Not really. Um, do have a look at the um, the Witness stream. Um, if you haven't had a look at that, that was a lot of fun on Thursday night. And I'm hoping to, to go again on that um, probably on Tuesday night, UK time, uh, if life doesn't get in the way of that. So wish me luck with, with all these things that life's getting in the way of. Right. With all that said, let's get on to potpourri. And I will read you the rules. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, digits on a green line must differ from their neighbours on the line by at least five. Ah, right, so these green lines are German whispers lines. I understand those. This is good. Um, digits on a purple line must form a set of consecutive non-repeating digits in any order. So these are Renban lines. Um, how do they work? Well, basically, we've got to decide what goes on them. Let's say it was, I don't know, three, oh, three, five, six four that would be an absolutely legitimate way to fill the purple line you can see that three five six and four are a set of digits that are consecutive three four five and six so we could fill the purple line with those digits um digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle we've actually only got that one circle in the grid so that means whatever we put in those two squares let's say that was a four and that was a three four plus three equals seven so that's what we'd have to put in the circle there and then this arrow would have to also sum to seven so standard arrow rules so far standard everything rules um cells separated by an x must contain digits summing to ten okay so those two squares sum to ten those two squares sum to ten and these squares, those squares sum to 10, and those do as well. And cells separated by V must contain digits summing to five. So same is true for the, these two. Those add sum to five, and those two sum to five. So it's a collection, a potpourri, if you like, of, um, of very standard rules, but quite a few different variants sort of going on in this puzzle at the same time. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play, let's get cracking. Um, okay, well, the first thing I'm seeing is that in box five, look, we have two V's. Now, there are only two ways of making V, uh, one and four, and two and three. So these squares together form one, two, three, and four, uh, which I'm immediately wondering whether this is a high-low coloring puzzle, to be honest. And the reason for that is that I can now see that all of this Z pentomino here are relatively high digits. They're all five, six, seven, eight, and nine, which means that this square is a relatively high number. And it means this square can't also be a relatively high number because if it was, let's make that the minimum it could be, this square cannot be higher than four. So in fact, those two digits are also relatively low. So the question we've got to ask ourselves is, is this colouring? I made such a boo-boo yesterday. I assumed something was going to be set related and it wasn't at all. And I wasted about five minutes of the video talking. Well, it wasn't gibberish. What I said was true, but it was absolutely useful, useless in terms of solving the puzzle. Um, let me just think about this for a moment before we indulge ourselves by colouring the grid. I know I don't normally need much of an excuse. 
German whispers lines are weird. I mean, the thing about a German whispers line, well, there are two things to note about German whispers lines. The first is they can never contain a five, because if they have a five on them, let's try and put a five here and think about what we're going to put as the next cell. It has to be five different from five, so it's either a zero or a 10, or at least five different. So it's either zero, a negative number, or a 10 or greater. So it's clearly nonsense. That's why you can't put five on the line. Now, the other thing about a German whispers line is therefore it has a sort of parity constraint. It alternates. So it, those three cells are either going to all be highish digits or they're all going to be lowish digits. Because let's imagine that was a seven, for example. Now, this square has to be five different from seven. So it's going to be a one or a two. And then this square is going to have to be up again. It's going to have to be at least... Uh, six or more and then this, that's going to go down again so that the German whispers lines they oscillate um, uh, now maybe the five aha yes 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 okay <laughs> that's rather pretty oh that is really rather pretty right okay so straight off the bat it's a hybrid Sudoku so it's quite strange for it to have embedded within it a classic Sudoku technique. But this is indeed, I think, what we have got embedded in this puzzle. And the way the way to spot this is to think about fives in column one. Uh, and if you think about fives in column one, you can't put one on a German whispers line and you can't put one in a 10 domino because the other digit will have to be five as well to make 10. And that won't work. So where are we going to put five in column one? Boom, boom. Boom, just those three, I'm not going to go down the squells route again today, just three. these three cells are going to contain the digits five. Let's highlight those and see whether that means anything to us. Well, look at column nine. It's identical, it's just been flipped, flipped round. So that square, that square, and that square are the only possible positions for fives in column nine. And immediately our spider senses should be tingling here because these positions for five in those two columns are aligning in rows. So we just need to find one more column that has the same constraint and we have a swordfish. Well, let's have a look at the middle column then. That's got some uh, X's in it, which can't contain a five. So those are no good. So we're just left with those three squares. In fact, the middle square can't contain a five. I've just thought about that, but never mind about that. Let's, um, let's complete our swordfish and think about why on earth have I highlighted some cells in orange and what does it mean? Um, well, uh, I can see one thing it means, which, right, okay, this is going to be worth explaining, so bear with me. If you are not familiar with swordfishes, this is going to be an epiphany because this is important. So, the way to understand the implications of swordfishes. I've explained this in so many different ways over the years now, but I think the best way to understand it is to ask facetious questions to get, get, the, get it in your head, I suppose. So I want to ask questions about row three, row five, and row seven. And I want to ask how many fives we're expecting to find in the correct solution to this puzzle in row three. Now, the answer to that, I think we'd all agree, is one. If we're not planning on putting two fives in that row, and we're not planning on putting zero fives in that row, there will be exactly one five in row three. And there will be exactly one five in row five, and there will be exactly one five in row seven. So in these three rows, there are exactly three fives. But we know that the five that appears in this puzzle in column one is definitely in one of those rows. The five that appears in this puzzle in column five is definitely in one of those rows. And the five that appears in this puzzle in column nine is definitely in one of those rows. So we know that the orange squares in this puzzle contain three fives. And that's all the fives that we're allowed to put into these rows. If we were to try and put a five here, whoa, not, not a purple, a five. If we try and put a five here, we now know that these rows contain three fives in the orange squares and one five here. That's four fives in three rows of a Sudoku, which is nonsense. So 
That is why this is interesting. Now, why is it also interesting? Well, look at this. This is just beautiful setting as ever from Zetamath. I was, when I was looking at um, uh, the Logic Masters Germany page, if you look at Zetamath's most recent 20 puzzles, they are just all extraordinarily highly rated. Um, and this is because of this sort of thing. Look at how this Renban line works now. If we can't put a five on a Renban, a four cell Renban line, what does that mean? What does it mean that there is no five on this line? Well, it means this line has to either contain one, two, three, and four, because it has to contain consecutive digits, or it's got to contain six, seven, eight, and nine. Well, it's already got a one, two, three, or four on it. So the rest of the line must be, yep, one, two, three, and four. And this is now making me think we should be colouring. Although, maybe I've got to leave the swordfish colouring in there as well. Oh, good grief. Right. Yes, 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 yes. This is lovely. This is absolutely lovely. Okay, we should be colouring. I'm now convinced about that. Um, now, I'm going to have to colour a lot of this grid if I do this because I'm going to be colouring high and low numbers. So I'm wondering whether I should change my orange, because I think for colour blindness, the best contrasting colours are blue and orange. So I'm going to switch... I'm going to switch the swordfish colour to something different. I'm trying to think what's going to be the most helpful. Maybe red? I'm not sure if that is the most helpful, but... Um, no, I don't like red actually because red and orange are too close together. Let's maybe go yellow, although yellow and orange are also close together. Maybe go grey. We'll go grey. So the swordfish is grey. Now, if we start to highlight low digits in this grid, things suddenly become very interesting in, the, in row 7. Because these three squares, four squares, five squares, six, seven squares, they're all low. We'll make low orange. And we're going to make high digits, by which I mean six, sevens, eights, and nines, I think. We'll make six, sevens, eights, and nines blue. But it gets a bit complicated. Maybe I should also make five blue. Hmm. I don't know. But do you remember when, right at the start of the puzzle, I was noting that those two squares had to be low because these two squares have to be high digits. And obviously we can't make our circle add up to a double digit number. So if this is, a, this is this cell here is at least a five because we've already used up one, two, three, and four in box five. So this is at least a five. That's actually five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these squares are one, two, three, and four. Now those two therefore have permission to turn orange. And this is rather beautiful because now in row seven of the grid, we've got four low digits. So the rest of this row is high digits. And the most exciting cell is row seven, column two, because it is a high digit and it's not a five because it's on the German whispers line. So it has the uh, privilege, I suppose, of turning itself blue. And that gives us the parity of the German whispers line. So now we know that alternative set, alternate cells along that are high and the other cells along there are low. Which is very exciting. This is, these are the sorts of things I find exciting. <laughs> um, no comments, please. That square, which I've labeled gray, actually can't be a five because of the arrow logic. If we make this square a five, we know this square is at least a six, so the arrow won't work. We're gonna be adding up two numbers that are definitely going to be greater than five. So I think we can remove the grey from this one, um, so, ah, which means this has the honour of becoming blue again. Okay, so can we go further with this? And if so, how? That is the next challenge that we are left with. Um, hmm. That is the next challenge that we're left with. So in column one, we know that an X domino is going to basically contain a blue and an orange. 
which is, I don't think that's important, is it? I don't think that's what we're going to have to focus on. I feel like we're going to have to... Uh, <laughs> we're going to have to do something, and I don't know what that something is. Good grief. Um, dum, 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 dum. Oh, I know one thing that's interesting. Look, if we think about our swordfish now, given I've ruled out five from this square, the five in row five is either in this cell or it's in this cell because of the swordfish, which means that those two squares there are definitely blue. And that's rather beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. So now I've got four blues in row five. And if I've got four blues in row five, what's this square? This square cannot be blue and cannot be five, so must be orange. And that gives us the parity of the other German Whispers line. This is just sensational. Um, now, can we keep this going a little bit longer? How have we got... Have we learnt enough? So this is an orange and a blue. Um, <laughs> um, come on, Simon. What do we do now? I don't know. I'm actually wondering whether it might be better to just pencil mark all of the digits, but that feels a bit too much like good living. And although it is his birthday today, Happy birthday, bifurcation wizard. Um, I don't think that means I have to copy his solving style, although he may disagree with that. Let me think, how can we do this? Well, if I've got four blues there, and I know that the five is in one of those positions, these two squares must, of course, therefore be orange, which might be useful. Um, we got anything else that we can do feel like we're right on the cusp of understanding this puzzle those there must be a five in one of those squares in the middle box this is definitely a six seven eight or nine I will reward this one with pencil marking because it's in the arrow cell so it does feel appropriate oh, okay so I can't put nine on the on these arrow cells or this will add up to at least ten that means that there's a nine in one of those three squares in in uh, box five. So that means this square has got to be a six, seven, or an eight. Ah, okay. Let's have a think about that. That cannot be a six because this is another thing about German whispers lines. You have to be very careful with sixes and fours. If you put six here, both of those squares have to be five different from six. So there's only one, one digit that's permissible. They'd have to be double one, and double one won't work in the same box of the Sudoku or in the same column of the Sudoku. So that's not six. And that's interesting because that bounces back in here, I suppose. It means the six in this row, we know these are the four high digits. So there must be a six there, which means there's no sixes in those squares. Um, which is, might be interesting, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so what do I do now? Does anybody know? Can we resolve the swordfish? That feels like it would be a sensible thing to be able to do. I know there's a five in one of those two squares. Do I know which one? It, the most useful one would be here, you know, because that would force this Renban line. That would be beautiful. If there's a five here, this Renban line would have the same property as this Renban line in the sense it couldn't have a five on it. At the moment, it can have a five in this square, which breaks our ability to, do, to label that line either one, two, three, four or six, seven, eight, nine. 
So how do we make this square of 5? Is that a sensible thing to try and achieve? I don't know is the answer. Or have we got... Are we going to be able to do something? I'm just looking at column 9. I'm noticing that I've finished the blues in column 9. Ah, yes, got it, got it. Right, sorry, I've been very slow here. Look at column 9. This domino here at the bottom, we could actually label up like this. It's, it's got one high digit and one low digit in it. So if we look at column 9 carefully, we've got one, two, three, four high numbers. Now, if we look at this little square, this square also sees four low numbers. So this square cannot be a high number and cannot be a low number and is a five. Which means these change colour, but we've done our high numbers, so those must be both low numbers. Oh, I see. Oh, this is gorgeous. This is just gorgeous. So now those can't be grey anymore because we've already got our grey cell in row seven. Now, what about this row? We've now got four lows and four highs. So that cell is a five, which means that's not a five. And now, now we've done it. Now we've done what I was hoping to do. I've now got a five here. And why does this matter? Because this, obviously this has to be a five to complete the swordfish. Remember, we would locked a five into these particular cells. Um, so once we eliminate that one and that one, the only place left for a 5 in column 5 is this square here. Now, why is this beautiful? Because of our purple Remban line, which now must be high. It must be high because it can't have a 5 on it. So it's a sequence of four consecutive digits that are either 1, 2, 3, and 4. Well, we can't put three low digits in there or we're going to give ourselves a massive mighty problem in row 3. We'll have six digits that have to be selected from the digits 1, 2, 3, and 4. That won't work. So these are all high digits and therefore I get to turn them blue. Uh, which almost looks good, but maybe not. I see, you now I'm starting to see this puzzle now. Right, now I'm going to come back to column one and I'm going to label that domino orange and blue because it's got one high digit and one low digit to add up to 10. Now count the low digits in column one. We've got four, which means the rest of the digits that are white have to turn blue. I've now got four blues and a five in row three, so that's got to be a low digit. So now we've got even more things to think about. Look, I'm now seeing that this cell here and this cell here are the same digit. Because whatever I put in there, we know that the four low digits in box three are these four squares. So whatever goes in there can't go in there and we'll have to go there. That's going to make things very colourful if I start trying to record those things. Let's, let's label the X's up with the two colours. Yes, okay, so yeah, so now I've got my four low digits in column five. So that's got to be blue. That's got to be blue. Look, I didn't see that I'd done columns row seven as well. Similar thing here, that cell, whatever's in that cell has to be the same as that cell because of the Remban line. We know the Remban line contains all of the high digits, so whatever high digit that is must go there and therefore in one of those two cells. Um, okay. So, what do we do now? How do we make progress from here? What what is it that we've discovered that means is it this ah yeah okay that one can't be a six and why is that let's try and make it a six and prove why it can't be well if it's a six the options for these two squares become tricky. I can put a five in one of them, but the other one will contain a higher digit than a six and therefore it will break. So we can't put a six here. And we can't put a seven there because 
Yeah, that's good. That's good. Look, if we do 7, it's the same problem. I can put a 5 in one of those squares. The other one will then have to contain an 8. An 8 is bigger than 7, so that can't be a 7. So this square is 8 or 9. And one of these is a 5. So one of these is a 3 or a 4. Bobbins. Um... The other thing we could think about is the German whispers lines. Um, is there going to be a sort I'm wondering whether sixes and or fours are going to be restricted. Although if they are, perhaps this square is where that will have to happen. And no, and that's a low digit, so it's not even seeing anything. No, that's absolute nonsense. Well, this square here is low and it can't be a four. Because if it's a 4, you've got to go double 9 into those squares. Same is true of that square, actually. Exactly the same logic. Ah, I don't think that's going to be important. What about, can we do something similar then, thinking about 6s in these three? Oh, nearly. Nearly, but not quite. This clearly can't be a 6 because it would put double one into those squares. So that's got to be a seven, eight or a nine. This one can't be a six either for the same reason. It doesn't put um, ones into the same column, but it would put them into the same box. So that's seven, eight or nine. This one is annoying and irritating and has let itself down because it's the end of a Remban line. So it can absolutely be a six and have a one here. Yep. That is annoying. Okay. Um, okay, let's try this Remban line instead. Can we do anything with this? We can say this is seven or eight. So these squares can't be fours. They've got to be ones, twos, or threes. Ah, okay. No, this is better. Well, what's because what's this got the option of being? Yeah, I should have spotted this much more quickly, actually. I think as soon as we got the seven on the eight here, we remove the ability of these squares or this square in particular to be a four. And once this square can't be a four, this square can't be a four because those two squares would both have to be nine to be five different. So that square is a one, two or a three. And now where are we putting the four in the column? It's going to have to go in the X domino, and that's going to have to be 4 and 6, therefore. Which means that these three squares are not a 6. Therefore, where does the high 6 digit go in row 3? It's got to go there. That's a 6. OK, and now where does the 6 go in this box in the middle? It's not here anymore. We've already worked out it's not in the middle cell, so it must go there. So 6 is in one of those positions. Now, if we could get it here, it would be very nice. Uh, well, we can, can't we? Yeah, this is this is really clever. If this is a 6... Where do you put the six in box seven? Well, it's not going to be able to be in these three squares. And from our colouring, we know this is the other high digit. So you'd have to put it there where it can't go because there's already a six in the column. So this is not six. So the six is on the X and that's a four, six pair as well. So we've got a four, six pair here and a four, six pair there. Now, those two squares are not four which means the 4 in box 5 is in one of these two squares on the V, which means the 1 has to be in one of those two squares, which means you can't put 1s in these two squares. And that might matter. Um, what's that square going to be then? That's C6, so that's a 7, 8, or a 9. Okay. Um. Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> uh, I can get rid of four from there and four from here. Does that mean anything? Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe it does actually. Now let's look at these orange, this orange sequence here. Because the four in row seven is now in one of those two squares. Which is, oh, this is gorgeous. This is so intricate and lovely. Now, now, our four on the one, two, three, four Renban line is in this domino. So it's not there. And if that's not a four, what does that tell us about what, the, well, it tells us this square is a two or a three. So obviously that's got to accompany a two or a three on its V line, which means this is the one four pair and we can place it. That's a four and that's a one. And that's not a one. Good grief. Okay. Now, yeah, okay. And now, now I'm going to repeat this trick in reverse. This is a two or a three, which means the one on the Remban line is in one of those three squares, which means that square is not a one. So we've got this one down to being a two or a three on the arrow. Right, so I can remove eight from this square now. Because if, if we make this square an 8, I've got to add 2 or 3 to it. And that's going to give us a double digit number. So that's not an 8. Uh, now, I'm wondering if that means something for this arrow. So either, if this is 5 and 3, you've got to put 8 in here. Otherwise, it's just not five, is it? You're going to have five and two, which won't work. So this is either five and three, or it's seven and two. But that still gives this the option of being eight or nine. Um, okay. Five. Five and three eight here then you've got to go seven one here which looks possible and if that's nine you've got to go seven. Oh, I see. ah yeah okay i see what's happening here i'm going to get that digit good grief right what's going on here is this if well actually there's another way of thinking about this which is more straightforward i think let's just ask whether this can be eight is it possible for this to be eight? The answer I think is no, because once this is eight, or am I wrong about that? No, I'm not wrong, I'm not wrong about that. The reason this can't be eight is I know one of these two has to be a five. So now this one has to be a five, but then this has no possible value. Because if this is eight, this needs to be nine, but when this is five, you can't add four to it because the four's over here. So this is not eight. So I think that that is that probably is a bit simpler than the way I was about to explain it, which was by looking at the options for this, these two, and figuring out what it meant for this, and then what it meant for that, because I'd seen this couldn't be an eight indirectly via doing that. So yada yada yada. But I think you under I think hopefully I've made that clear. This square cannot be an eight. So this is five seven, which means that's not seven. I've now got an eight nine pair in the row, and this square becomes a seven. And a seven on a German whispers line may not be quite as good as a six, but it's still quite good in this case because this can't now be a three. So that's a two. Well, that's going to give us maybe something, um, or maybe not. Seven in box. One has to be in one of those squares. Ah, I've got a two, three pair here. So now that is a one, and this is a three. And the, well, three on a German whispers line is pretty good because you've got to, uh, especially when these two squares have to be diff different digits, because they have, must be an eight, nine pair. Oh, whoopsie. Uh, because we've got to go at least five difference so we've got to go to eight and then nine is the other option 
So now this square is forced to be a 7 because it can't be a 6, which means that square is a 6, which means this square is an 8 or a 9 by Sudoku now. I've now got an 8-9 pair in column 5, which is lovely. Let's look at column 5 now. What's on the X domino? It's not an 8, it's not a 9, it's not a 6. It must be a 7. So that's a 3-7 pair. This square's a 2, this square's a 3. Remove 3 from that, that Renban line, I should say, which means that square's a 3. Wow. Um, and hopefully keep going. Oh, okay, yeah, now this square is a 3, so I can use the arrow again. This can't combine with a 7 to make 10, so it must combine with a 5. And therefore, we're looking for 8, not 9, in the middle cell. Therefore, this square is a 7. It can't be repeat the 5. That square becomes a 1. That's not a 1 anymore. So this is 2 or 3. Uh, that doesn't allow us to remove anything. Uh, we can remove 7 from this one just because of this 7. Um... Okay, I'm not sure if we can do more than that. We may be able to. 9 on this little Remban line is now going to have to be in that domino look. So this square, and so that square is forced to be an 8, I think. Because it just can't be a 6 or a 7, and it can't be a 9. So that's an 8. Those two squares are a 7-9 pair, and we know the order. So that's a 7, that's a 9, that's an 8, that's a 9. That's a 9, and that square is an 8. This square is not an 8. Good grief. Okay, and I feel like we're actually making... Yeah, that's an 8 by Sudoku. How many 8s have we got? The answer is many 8s. Yes, and where do we put the 8 in box 3? It's going to have to go here now doesn't quite give us the 8 look in this box. Um, this 1 is giving us a 2 there, so now we get a 1-4 pair into those two squares. And that's gorgeous because now I know what this X arrow is, because it's not 1, 9, 4, 6 or 2, 8, so it's 3, 7, there's a 3 over here. 3 and 7 go into the grid, 9 up here, this is now an 8 which must give us all the 8s now. Let's double click the 8s and make sure that they're all blue so that we're consistent with that. Where does 9 go in box 2? I think only in this square. Again, that needs to be blue. So those two squares are 2 and... F ah, 2, 2. That's a... Oh, goodness me. That needs to be a 2. And that needs to be a 4. And that's a 4 and that's a 6. And... Therefore, I suppose I can correct the colouring into those squares. Give that square its rightful orange. There's got to be a 4 in one of those two positions. Forgive me if I'm missing very many obvious Sudoku things here. I'm sort of jumping around a bit as I see things. Um, now, where should we look? We have got to place a... Oh, I've got to put a 6 in this column, so it's going to have to go on the blue line there. And once you put a 6 on a German Whispers line, a blue line or a green line, it must be next to a 1. So these squares now... Oh, so where does the 1 go in column 9? It goes here. These two squares have got to be a 2-4 pair. It's probably resolvable, but I can't immediately see how. Uh, that's got to be... Uh, 2, 3, or 4. This square's got to be a 3 or a 4. Um, and the potency of our German Whispers line, or lines, I should say, looks to be diminishing. Um, okay, let's just carry on with Sudoku, I think. 4s, 7s, and 9s. That's a naked single. That can only be a 4. This is a 7, 9 pair. And therefore, I'm going to make both of those blue. That's going to turn orange. That means this square's a 3. That uh, doesn't do it. That's a 2-4 pair now. 3 is in one of those two squares. 
These two squares have got to be 9 and 6, which we can do. 9 and 6 go in the grid. Turn them blue. Turn that blue. Turn that grey. Um, okay, and now take a take a moment to stare at the grid and see if we... Why is that 2, not orange? Gosh, that will have been annoying some of you. Um, so these squares here are 1, 2, 3 and 5. So that's a 1, 2 pair, which is probably going to be useful. That's a 3, 5 pair. That fixes the 3, fixes the 7. We can correct the colouring, so let's do that. 7's got to be in this domino. This square's no that squares are known to be a six. I think I'd have been better doing the colouring at the end. Uh, this one is giving me a one and a four. And those squares therefore have got to be oh sorry, I've just seen that and it's bugging me, so I've got to correct that first. Um, these squares have got to be two, six, and nine, and there's a nine in the bottom row already. So this squares, these squares are two and six, which we can also fill in. That gives us the six, gives us the four. Yeah, this is probably where we should have been looking. This seems to be filling things in. Um, those two squares are a one, seven pair, which we can do. That square's therefore got to be a something, a five, I think. These two squares are a two, four pair. Doesn't seem to be resolved. And those two squares are a one, five pair, which also doesn't seem to be. Oh, this three is doing the magic. I see. I was wondering how we were ever going to resolve that, but we can. All of those go in. This nine is giving us the nine and the seven. That's fixing the seven in box one. Now this square is the five. That square's a five. That square should be a three. And that is filling my German whispers line, hopefully. Two, four. There we go. And now I won't click tick until I've, I've double clicked all the nines and made them blue. Double clicked all the sixes and made them blue. Double clicked all the fives, made them grey. Ones need to be orange. Threes need to be orange. Twos need to be orange. Sevens need to be blue. Ah, why did that four not get highlighted? You naughty thing. Oh, look, and I've still got unresolved nonsense there. So that needs to be there and there. And I think that's how to solve the puzzle. It's just beautiful, isn't it? I mean, it's a really, really intricate series of clevernesses from Zeta Math, as always. The the start I really liked is the you know the fact that the fives are limited in this column, this column, and this column, and the way that that is used is just elegance personified. The fact that these V's, which look so innocent, um, and, but whereas this square here is absolutely critical because giving this square a lowness quality actually allows us to know that the rest of this line is is also also has the quality of lowness because the fives because we can't we couldn't put a five on the line and that really got us started after that what do we do after that i'm not sure i remember i had to get a five here yeah we could resolve the swordfish by considering low high and then we got those as high and from there it just sort of it gradually gave away its secrets i hope you enjoyed it do let me know in the comments and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic